Hey guys, National Master James Canty III here, and today we have another awesome puzzle. Before we get started, make sure you guys click the subscribe button right under the video so you guys can catch more videos just like this one. Make sure you like, comment, share the video, and make sure you put some comments under the video about puzzles you guys would like to see in the future. So let's get right into it. Have you guys ever seen this puzzle before? Take a look at it. Take a look at it. Take a real good look at it because a lot of you guys probably even know this puzzle. If you don't, Take a look at it. See what you can do. See if you can figure this out. It's actually right now black to move in this position. See if you can figure this out. Pause the video. Just pause it. We'll be right here. See if you can figure this out. It's black to move here. And if you're familiar with this, then you know. If you're not, we're going to see it today. So this puzzle, this comes from the World Chess Championship 2018. The reigning champion, Magnus Carlsen, versus the challenger, number one in the U.S., Fabiano Kirawano. This happened in 2018, and this is, a, this is game six, by the way, guys. This is very, very crucial. Every game ended in a draw, by the way. A little bit of history on it. It was 12 games, world championship, held in New York, and, I mean, first time since Bobby Fischer. And this, every game ended in a draw. Huge for chess. Huge for chess. It was so awesome. It was so much fireworks on the board. Many in games. Uh, of, um, Magnus could have won the first game, but of course that ended in a draw. And Fabiano could have won this game. Fabiano could have won this game. Now this is very very tough. All in games are very very tough, guys. But even even engines, even super strong engines, couldn't figure out this win. It took uh, a little bit of the engine help, but also some help from strong grandmasters to figure out the Zugzwei method of this as well for how Black could have won this game. It was very very tough. Very very tough. And uh, I recommend you guys see if you can figure this out. See if you if you ever seen this before or not. But let's check this out and see what Black does. So let's go with the game move and see what happened here. Fabiano played knight to f3 with the black pieces. Knight f3. It's not really much here. And trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay. So looking at the first off the material on the board, Fabiano is currently up a piece here. A knight and uh, just a knight actually. A knight and a bishop versus a bishop. And White has two pawns and a bishop. So White has two pawns. Um, and a bishop versus the knight bishop and a pawn and of course kings on the board so white is going this way he wants to queen his pawn but realistically he can never get across and this could be a draw if if uh black is not you know able to to make any attacks or anything or make this work maybe there's checkmate threats there's a lot that can happen here but there is uh so much that goes on to this position it's very tough to understand the logistics behind this position what it needs to be black can win this position if he can win the h pawn if he can win this H pawn, he can win. Or if he can win the F pawn, he can win. He can win this game. And it's also due to Zugzwang of the position as well. So um, what happened in the game was knight F3. After knight F3, the game goes king to H7. So this is Magnus going king H7, just trying to get the king, kind of shoulder him out, but also he can't move as well. So now after knight E5, and actually going back, notice this, guys. After knight F3, the king does not have to stay here anymore on the F5 pawn, which opens up this. So this move was just... Um, kind of weird and actually incorrect. It just doesn't work. Knight of three, king here, knight e5. And then we move out of the way. The bishop comes back, just shuffling a little bit, keeping this diagonal going. So if the king moves, we can actually queen his pawn. He's actually stopping h6 from happening after knight to g4. So Magnus goes bishop to c4. Fabi goes knight e3. Bishop over to d3. King knight back to g4 as we repeat moves in a way now. King h6, king back to g6. King moves around. He shuffles the bishop. And the king starts to walk. We go on a king walk. The bishop is very nice defending this on this diagonal and trying to get a zugzwang position. But this bishop never has to move. It can go back and forth right here, especially with the king sitting here. If the king steps off, you lose because knight takes c4 and it's just over from there. But what you could do is shuffle the bishop back and forth. As you see, he went forward and also he could go backward. So king c5 and he goes backward. Then he moves around a little bit because this is undefended. I mean, this is defended with the king, so he can always go here if he needs to. But this is probably the worst case because it's, it's on the short diagonal, which means there'd be a problem defending this, especially around Zugzwang. So knight to e3, threatening this pawn again. Very nice move. Then h6. h6 has been played. After h6 is played, bishop has to take this or he's going to queen. And there it is. The game ends in a dead draw. After king takes h6 and how it happens is knight takes f5, king can really step anywhere. And no matter, whenever this pawn advances, we're going to just capture it. And then it's going to be an easy draw for whoever. So usually you just don't want that to happen. So 
I'm going back to it. That that was the game, guys. This was the game. This was the exact game that happened. Fabi started with knight to f3. That's what he started with. Again, king h7. And we went this route. We shuffled a little bit. Bishop to c4. Got the bishop around to defend this pawn. And it, it became a draw very quickly, as you see here. But it's very, very hard to win this game. It took Fabi, actually. It said five hours. Five hours trying to figure this out, and he ended up getting a draw. Also, he got in time trouble as well. So what is supposed to happen here? Knight of three doesn't work. This probably doesn't work either. It just doesn't make sense to actually do this either. Well, what does work? We understand what's the concept first. The concept is we need to create a zugzwang position where at the end we're winning one of these pawns. That is the goal for black. The black needs to figure out how to do that. And that's going to be a maneuver and shifting of pieces to the same squares, a little bit of triangulation, which we're going to show here in a minute, and figure out how we can win one of these pawns and how black can actually win this game. So let's check that out. After we've looked at knight of three, really doesn't work. There's really not much else to do. You can't move the king here. This doesn't just make sense at all. So what else do we do? Well, here's the move, guys. If you found this move, pat yourself on the back. Okay, round of applause. It's bishop to h4. Bishop h4. This is a very deep move here. Very deep move. White will fall into Zugzwang sooner or later and lose one of these pawns, f5 or h5. And, and, and if he's forced to, if he plays h6, he could be mated. Or either play h6 or he could be mated. There's a lot of examples here. Let's see what happens. We got a few moves here from White. White can go bishop d5. We can try king h6. We can try h6. We can even try king h7 and bishop to e6. All of these are moves that can try. So let's go through each one and look at the lines and see what happens. So let's start with bishop to d5. If bishop to d5, well, then where does black go now? What do you think you should do? We only have, I mean, there's only a few knight moves we can make. And knight e2 seems like it's the best one to make. It also creates a threat immediately of knight f4. And then we're just winning. This bishop covers here. So let's see how this goes. Knight to e2. Bishop f3. That's a nice move. We just got to threaten. We don't have much to do. So the bishop has to move around. And here's the killer move, guys. This is the move right here that's very hard to find. That uh, if, if, if he wouldn't played this move, if Fabi would have found this, he would be just winning. Knight to g1. Knight to g1 is a very, very hard move to find. It creates the zugzwang position we're looking for here. Now, you have two moves. You have bishop to d5 or bishop to g4. Let's start with bishop d5 first just to see what happens. And then we move over to bishop to g5. Okay, bishop g5 is now, uh, we've already been here before, but now it's white's move, actually. So after he moves h6, we can go knight back over here to check him. Knight e2, king h7. Um, knight to f4, bishop c4, and swing the knight right back around. Right back around, actually. Sorry, knight e3. Knight e3 is the way to go. After king g6, king g8. And this is a lot of maneuvering, but as you see, once we get this position here, as the h6 pawn has advanced here, this is now a zug swing position. This is now a zug swing position. Bishop f4, knight to c4, and we can swing the e5 or actually hit here which is much better. 95 check and king takes h7. And we finally get the h pawn and this should fall soon. Also, the king does not have to stay back here anymore. We can just honestly walk the king around. Zug swing position, very easy to snag this, snag this pawn. This king's actually trapped by the way too as well. So you might try something like bishop g8. So if king takes, then there's just a, it's a stalemate because the king can't move. So we just step out of the way, play king g7, and we don't have to fall into this desperado bishop move from there. So going back to that, we, we, when, when they push the h6 pawn here after knight g1, knight g1, bishop to d5, after bishop d5, um, uh, access e4, bishop to d5, and then we play bishop to g5 just to sit here and, and make him make a move here. h6, we bring the knight back, create a threat on the board. He plays king to h7. And actually, you know, pushing this would be a drastic move, guys. Knight f4 is just checkmate. Like, that's such a sweet checkmate to see. Oh, my goodness, that's checkmate, right? So you don't want that to happen. But uh, so he plays king h7 to step out of the way. Knight f4, he swings around and hits the bishop. Bishop moves out of the way. We swing back around for a few squares, this one or also this one, but this one is the best one. And then knight to e3, king g2, king g8, check. This pawn is too far ahead. And then we move. he moves the bishop around. We find a square to go to so that we can snag this pawn because he can't defend it. Check, take the pawn, we win. That's one way. Whoa, so crazy that this could have happened on the board and the world championship as we know it could have been changed forever, right? So this is such a, a very a detrimental moment to understand here after, after this line. Now, after bishop d5, they actually have another line, which is bishop to g4. This one is more common. As you can see, it just restricts all the squares of the knight. So what do you do? Well, we just do the same kind of thing, king g8, 
make some opposition happen here. Okay, king h6, then we check him, or actually we go bishop g3 first. Bishop g3 first and then back around. This is the little triangulation or the little move order you have to do, Zeus wing wise. Bishop e5 to sit here, then you check him, and then we come back to g5. This is so hard to do in end games, and when and when not to do it is probably some of the hardest things you'll learn in chess here. If you go back and look at this again, how this worked is he moved bishop g3. He wanted it to be black to move or white to move when he gets the bishop to g5. Watch this. Check. And now it's white to move. Same position almost, but it's white to move here, which makes the difference because the bishop has to move or the pawn has to move. The pawn moves, king h8. So if the bishop moves, h7, of course, and then we move the bishop again. He moves his or king king moves. We move the bishop around some more. And then it's, it's ridiculous. Look at this. That was such a beautiful maneuver, guys. I mean, this is absolutely stupendous to look at like bishop here check and then the same move order worked again as you can't move anything forcing the bishop to move off forcing the bishop and this is actually a deadly zook swing because now the bishop has to move in the knight and the knight swings around wherever you go i can go this way and check or i come back around the other way and check and i pick up this pawn once again very cool stuff i mean absolutely absolutely brilliant brilliant it's so hard to find these little small things in the end game like this Bishop g4, I mean, wow, unbelievable, unbelievable. King h6, you also have h6 in this position too. If they play h6, which is a little bit different, then you just play bishop g5 anyway. h7, king h8, the bishop moves, and then we just swing the knight around. Knight h3, and threatening to check, and again, picking up the h7 pawn. So he wins in that way too. Unbelievable stuff. So going back to it, bishop to h4, we looked at bishop to d5. We already looked at the bishop to d5 lines. Now let's let's check out what happens if he just pushes the pawn to h6. This is the most logical, or it seems very logical, right? Because if I can push this, I'm winning. I'm fine. But then we swing the knight to c6 for the check here. Well, what happens if we just push the pawn? Check, king h6, bishop g5, king out of the way, and I don't have to take this. I can just go king g7. Oh, but then white has bishop to g8. Looks cool, but check this move out. King h8 and his zook swing. And the bishop has to move. This game wins completely just off the Zug's wing method. If you understand how to do it, it's very, very tough. It's the hard, one of the hardest things to master in the end game or any game. And uh, this Zug's wing was the was the theme of this whole win here. Whole win here. H6 doesn't work. So after bishop to H4, let's try. How about King H7? King H7. We've tried other things, but that just loses the pawn immediately. So that doesn't work either. Knight takes F5. He's just winning. Um, how about King H6? Okay, take on f5, same thing. How about the last move we can try is bishop to e6. Bishop e6, now taking this, you may run, you, you not may, you're going to run in trouble. So this just doesn't make sense to take it. So after bishop to e6, we have knight to e2, knight h7, knight swings in, cutting off some squares for the king, h6 and bishop to g5, forcing some zoog swing once again. Now we move the knight here and we're gonna attack this pawn now in this way, actually this is a way as well, but knight e3 is the most common. Uh, or the best way to do it bishop to d3 king f7 bishop d5 this is pretty tough honestly but once you get this knight here you're able to snag this pawn once again the key is snagging the pawn snagging one of the pawns and if i can snag one of these pawns how do i snag them through zug zwang how do you get zug zwang through the maneuver of the same pieces but making it uh making it white smooth making it my opponent's turn in that same position will be a zug zwang kind of um method as, as we choose here and as we use so Fabi played knight f3, and these guys got to this position here. They moved around. We moved around forever, forever. After five hours and some time trouble, Fabi just decided this is a draw. And this is the line it went for. But what would have won if he understood and had more time, of course, which is very tough to do. I mean, this is, you know, you're playing against Magnus Carlsen, the world champion. Game six. Every game has been a draw. You're up a piece here. There's a lot of emotion going on as well. It's very tough. It's just very, very... A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on him to, to try to win this game. And all he had to do, which is very hard to do, is bishop to h4 and go for a zoog swing position where if I win one of these pawns, I'm going to win a game. And that was probably his goal. It's just the wrong method. It's so much to see. Not enough time. Crazy game there. Bishop to h4 would have won the game, followed by, you know, knight f3, knight, G, uh, knight g1 maneuvers, bishop to g5, king g8, and swinging a knight around and actually triangulation, putting a bishop actually here after doing this kind of stuff, moving it back, check, back to g5 again. It's white to move. 
crazy stuff. I hope you learned something today with Zook Swing, and hopefully you guys can take that and use it in your own games as well. This is game six of the World Championship 2018 with Magnus Carlsen versus Kirwana. And this is uh this this was this ended in a draw. The whole match, 12 games all drawn, so Magnus keeps the title. This was an awesome puzzle, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So make sure you guys follow the socials again. Make sure you follow and uh, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and um, put comments and like and share this video. Thank you so much. I'm National Master uh, James Canty. Make sure you guys uh, follow me on Twitter too as well. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, all my socials. So thank you so much, guys, for sticking around. I'll see you on the next puzzle.